Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and then, forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. And Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. The Old Testament lesson is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Therefore, justice is far from us and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light and behold darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight. Among those in full vigor, we are like dead men. We all growl like bears. We moan and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our inequities, transgression, transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart lying words. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away, for truth has stumbled in the public squares and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it and it displeased him and there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, so will he repay. Wrath to his adversaries, repayment to his enemies, to the coastland he will render repayment. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. For he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives. 
and a Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please remain seated and pray Psalm 13. How long will you utter forget leave forget me, O Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I seek counsel in my soul and be so vexed in my heart? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes that I sleep not in death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him. For if I am cast down, those who trouble me will rejoice. But my trust is in your mercy, and my heart is joyful in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord, because he has dealt so lovingly with me. Indeed, I will praise the name of the Lord most high. Our New Testament lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying, a, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain and often falls on it and produces a crop useful to those whose sake, whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent, but he cried out all the more, 
Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? This is the second time in two weeks we get that. What do you want me to do for you? If Jesus were to come through those doors in the back, walk into this sanctuary, come down the center aisle and pause and turn and look directly at you and say those words. What do you want me to do with you? How would you respond? How would you respond? Think about that for a while. Daydream while the sermon yammers on. That's fine. <laughs> but we have to be able to answer that question. We have to be able to answer the question. What do you want me to do for you? As you think about that, you need to also ask yourself, is what I want Jesus to do something that will please him? Is what I ask for a legitimate request, a true need, or is it all about my selfish wants? Finally, you should also consider, do I believe that Jesus can do what I ask? All of that's wrapped up in this morning's confrontation with Bartimaeus. Which, by the way, it's interesting. Bartimaeus, we're even told in Mark, is the son of Timaeus, which is nice. But how many other people in Scripture who are the recipients of God's grace, recipients of God's miracle, do we get to know the name? This is it. This is the one. So it must be important. But Big Bart has absolutely no hesitation. For Bartimaeus, the answer is obvious. The scriptures tell us Bartimaeus has been blind from birth. And if you read other places in scripture, you'll know that in the three synoptic gospels, there is an account of a healing of someone who is blind from birth. In one of them, the, the um, disciples asked Jesus later, uh, who sinned, he or his parents? Because being blind was a punishment from God. And uh, Jesus says, neither, it was so that, so that God may be made manifest. Well, here we are, Jesus passes by, Bartimaeus is called out for mercy. The crowd rebukes him, tried to put him back in his place because on the socioeconomic scale, he's He's way down there, way down there. So why did they do that? Perhaps they assumed that this sorry specimen of a man would bother the busy Jesus. Or perhaps they felt that their own needs and wants were far more important than those of this useless beggar. Could even be that they were embarrassed by the unwanted, uninvited interruption. But Bartimaeus' faith told him that, there was, that this was his only chance, his only chance at sight. So he yells even louder. Of course he does. And let's take a moment to set the scene. Mark tells us this story, and Jesus is at his height of his popularity. He's got his disciples, which probably number far more than the 12, that are walking with him through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem on the way to death. We read that it's a large crowd. 
and they're following Jesus and he's teaching his disciples, all of the disciples along this journey. And now we would begin to realize that sense of urgency in all that Jesus does. We have seen, we have seen throughout the previous passages how that even Jesus' closest followers could not fully comprehend what was going on and what was to answer, what was, what was coming for them. In fact, last week, we heard the, we discovered that James and John approached Jesus and asked him the same question, we want you to do something for us. And his response, what do you want me to do for you? Of course, they wanted, they wanted seats of honor, one on the left, one on the right. And Jesus says, you can't, you can't ask for that that's already appointed for those whose true destiny it is. Well, now leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, he passes a man with, with, that is reduced by disability, and he's a beggar. Name is Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus. And again, for some reason, Mark thinks it's important that we know that Bartimaeus is, means son of Timaeus. He's got his disabilities. He was known. He has been known. He's been seen on that same stoop forever as a beggar. So what we get is a miraculous healing. But we get this, this call, son of David, son of David, and Jesus responds. As so happens with scripture, happens many times in scripture, it's important too for us to understand that there's another very important and often overlooked point. Mark tells us Bartimaeus was sitting by the, by the roadside. At the end of today's passage, we read that Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the road or the way. The Greek word for roadside and road and way is the same word. So when we begin to understand this, we begin to see that this is more than a story about a miracle. In fact, the miracle might be the lesser of the important facts. Bartimaeus calls out, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Nonetheless, despite his flattering rhetoric, the people rebuke him. Their action shows the strong disapproval of the crowd. For the verb here used for rebuke is one that Mark uses when Jesus did to the demons, what Peter did to Jesus, and what Jesus finally does to Peter. It is the rebuke. It's a harsh word. Yet, disregarding the crowd, the crowds uh, calling him off, Jesus stops and tells the people, take heart, come, bring him to me. Take heart, he calls you. Now it's these same people who most likely agree with Bartimaeus' assessment of Jesus, nevertheless, they attempt to stifle him. This blind beggar, regarded as a worthless sort, yet Jesus, Jesus who has regularly has commanded and, ex commanded and exercised demons, the enthusiastic disciples, and the exonerated disabled to silence their hearts with the cry, and calls the man forward. When the rabbi, when Jesus, asks what he wants from him, Bartimaeus simply says, teacher, my teacher, let me see again. He knows enough about Jesus to call him teacher or rabbi and has enough personal belief in him to say, my teacher, my rabbi. This new title of teacher and the request itself shows Bartimaeus' willingness to learn from Jesus, to receive from Jesus, perhaps even his willingness to learn to see again. So again and again, Jesus sought to teach his disciple about the saving of the passion, death, and resurrection. But as we see in scripture, even last week, again and again, they demonstrated that they did not learn their lessons. They could not see, yet Jesus says to Bartimaeus that your faith has healed you. Some translators say saved 
and healed, that is, made him truly whole, as God had intended Bartimaeus to be from the beginning. For us to experience all that Jesus has had for us, it is imperative for us to first realize that we lack something. Bartimaeus not only knew that he lacked sight, but just as surely recognized that he could do nothing to correct it on his own. More significantly, that Jesus alone had the power to heal him. This miracle, and any miracle of transformation, can occur only, only when we acknowledge our own limitation, acknowledge our own level of inability to make the change, and that Jesus alone can meet that need. In our spiritual blindness, we are usually tempted to falsely assume that we can work things out all on our own. If we'll only exercise initiative and creativity, we can fix ourselves. Nah, not really. In order to open the door for a miracle in our lives from Jesus, we must also seek him and ignore the public opinion. When Bartimaeus calls out to Jesus, the crowd told him to shut up. In our lives as well, they will often discourage us from getting to know God and taking Jesus seriously. But God is in the business of performing miracles in spite of the public cynicism and outcry. Bartimaeus could have given up when the crowd rebuked him and would have remained blind, but he was persistent, focusing only on Christ, not listening to or being influenced by the opinion of the crowd. Looking back, we see that Bart is in quite a, con quite a contrast to the disciples. Immediately, immediately, as the first disciples answered Jesus' call, Bartimaeus saw clearly and followed, followed Jesus along the road for the way. So how often do we find ourselves sitting alongside the road, sitting by the way, but fail to see, to acknowledge, to the truth that is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and life everlasting. Once blind, sitting by the way, Bartimaeus called, called to Jesus, perhaps not fully understanding who Jesus truly was or his mission, but as Jesus called him, he left all that he had behind. And he got healed and he had to learn from Jesus. And Bartimaeus moved into the path of discipleship as he followed Jesus in the way. For him, Jesus is the way forward, even though Jesus is walking to the cross. So back to the beginning. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Do you believe he can do that. Your faith will heal you. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For, Father, for Stephen, our Archbishop, Eric, our Bishop, and Gadi, Bishop of our Companion Diocese, and for all the clergy and people of, of our Diocese and Congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, especially Father Richard and Martha, Julie, Father Francis, Father Russ and Heidi, Father Steve and Father Frank, and for all who teach and disciple others. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Let's see Richard, Taylor, Daniel, PJ, Victoria, Kathy, Connor, May, Jimmy, Mikhail, Grace, Greta, Anton, Renee, Judy, Chuck. I invite the congregation to offer their own prayers at this time. Join us in the prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. Sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Lord be with you.